Now, the Lad Divisional Police Command has arrested a 30-year-old man who allegedly butchered his ex-wife last week here in Accra. Rex Kwano was arrested at the police hospital in Accra when he decided to visit his butchered wife, whom he was misled to believe was still alive, but hospitalized. Na Anyoko Ajay's report. Speaking to the police and media, Rex admitted to the offense, adding he has not regretted his actions. According to him, the deceased decision to end their relationship led him to kill her. When I came to Labadi, her auntie told her to give me a chair, and she took the chair in truth and then headed towards the room. So when she opened the door, I saw her phone on there is this lab, there is this lab on the distant. So I took the phone to take some of the numbers she had on the phone to call them and then warn them and when she saw that as i turned she pulled the bag behind the bag i was wearing and then the knife fell so as she went down to pick the, the knife i also took i also held the knife but where i held i held the mouth and she held the the back and then it was there that the, this thing started According to the La Divisional Police Commander, Chief Superintendent Udrua Menin, measures are being put in place to process the suspect for court. He cautioned both parents and the youth to carefully scrutinize people they associate with. In fact, we should be careful. We should be careful about the type of people our children goes out with, both boys and girls. And they should be warned. We should talk to them that these things that he was talking about, blood covenant or whatever, it is never the best. No one should advise their child to enter into that thing. Because if you do so, you've been bonded for life. As at the time you are doing it, you've been blended with love and you are too young. If you grow up and then you realize, Charlie, not knowing, this guy is not the best one for me. It has become a problem for you. So we should be careful, the youth. If we are entering into a relationship, we should be careful. And then the parents also, we should also be careful with the people, the type of people that our children goes out with. He further appealed to the media to tread cautiously when dealing with sensitive cases in order not to complicate the facts of the case. Nanyoko Ajay's report. The Accra Metropolitan Assembly is insisting it would not allow traders to take over Accra's pavements and that it will continue to drive hawkers away, reacting to the weekend's clash between the Assembly's guards and hawkers at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle. PRO of the AMA, Numo Blafo, justified the exercise to clear the traders from the pavements, explaining the motive is to ensure they take up stalls at the pedestrian shopping mall in the vicinity. He warned shop owners, most of whom are now occupying the pavements, they risk losing their stalls if they fail to use them. A lot of these traders have stalls in the pedestrian shopping mall. So the more we allow them to be on the pavement, the more that investment becomes useless. And per what we are doing, if, for example, you have a stall in there and you've left it and come onto the pavement and you have been driven from the pavement, where would you go? You have to go back into your stall. You understand? You have to go back into your stall. So whatever it is, this is a signal for those who have stalls there to go in. Let us see how many stalls will remain empty and see whether we can reallocate them to others who need them. Now, asked about the traders' defiance of the directive after working hours when the AMA guards are not at post, Numo Blafo conceded the assembly did not have enough guards to maintain a continuous presence uh, and, and asked for public support. That place is for pedestrians. So if people are encroaching on it, they are actually infringing on the rights of movements of others. And that is where I want or I will even like the media to take it up from. That yes, though they think they are engaging in some um, maybe trading activities or whatever, they are infringing on other people's rights, thereby putting them into danger. 
because if you encroach on the road or the pavement and the pedestrians will not have right to or the way um, to use then they will be forced to use the roads and in using the roads that's where we've gotten the statistics of high road crashes that is vehicles and pedestrians so i think it will depend on all of us if we are to sustain it but the ama is going to do all we can to make sure that the successes we have achieved there will not be eroded yes as part of all that you do the ama to ensure that uh, there's success what exactly because this is not the first time we have seen this exercise what exactly will you be doing differently well, it isn't any different issue as from what we've been doing, but that's what I'm saying that in the past, the media has been a problem for us, because whenever we undertake such activities, they go in there, they give the people platform, and the people do all sorts of allegations without verification, the media brokers and publishers. So that's why I'm appealing to the media to desist from that act so that we all can say that what they are doing is bad. Because if they come to you and immediately you tell them that the pavement is not meant for trading activities and you don't give them that platform to lament, I don't think they will come back again. But since they will come and you give them that platform and whatever allegations they make, you don't also verify then it's published and broadcasted. They feel that they have partners. So they are emboldened by that to come back, which sometimes weakens the efforts of the AMA. So but you will also be expected to put in some guards or some no, level, some level of laws here so that's that's to ensure saying. that they don't come back. Our guards are there. Are they you are going to increase them because we all saw what happened over the weekend? Yes, we don't have that numbers to say we are going to increase the numbers. We don't have it. So that's why I'm saying it is for the pavements are, is for all of us. You understand? It's not for anybody, any one person or one individual or a group of people to say that, yes, they have the right to trade there. Others can go to wherever they want to go. No, it's for all of us. So we need to protect it. We stay with issues with the AMA and Ghana is likely to lose some 1.6% of its GDP to road accidents and its related issues. This loss, according to the chief executive of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, Mohamed Ajay Soa, can however be minimized if safety measures are enforced and adhered to. One step to ensuring this, according to him, is to retrain officers of the MTTD to upgrade their knowledge and skills in motor trafficking. And he also is also asking that uh, there's an upgrade of our modern roads, which he says need some re-engineering. He spoke at the launch of the Bloomberg Global Initiative on Road Safety on Monday. Our metropolitan guards are also not strong enough to withstand the pressure and the intolerable discipline in the city. So together with the, with the, with the support from Bloomberg Initiative, and then other organizations as well, we intend to improve upon the capacity of our metropolitan guards so that uh, they will be able to support the police in the area of road safety and other areas in Accra. The, the city population is also growing at a very fast pace. So, Routes which supposed even to be to and from in the course of engineering in re-engineering have to be converted probably into one lane. If you go to Usu, the example cited by Mr. Chaga that look, Usu Oxford Street area is a residential area. Today it's increasingly becoming a commercial area, and there are no parking spaces, and yet the cars are supposed to go to and from. So how do we convert some of the lanes into a parking space so that you re-engineer the, the network in such a way that it will go one way and then you pass the other way? It, it goes in, it's a lot of things that you are talking about. It is not only the structure, we're talking about the processes as well. Over 600 people with hearing impairments have received free treatments in addition to aid from a U.S.-based organization, Stacky Hearing Foundation. The gesture is expected to relieve patients of high treatment costs 
and expensive materials. Here's Oheming Terrier's report. The World Health Organization estimates 360 million people live with hearing disabilities with a billion young people aged between 12 and 35 at risk of hearing loss due to recreational exposure to loud sounds. The Confanochi Teaching Hospital recorded 1,087 adult hearing-related cases in 2015. 897 children were presented within the same period. The number, however, increased to 1,186 for adults and 947 for children in 2016. The most common type of hearing loss presented according to experts is sensineura. It is hearing loss arising as a result of problems caused to the inner ear. Experts blame exposure to loud noise, aging, head trauma, among others. So it's difficult for them to, um, to get employment. And those who are traders too, they find it difficult to get customers. In case a child is a student, um, his academic performance too also goes down. And most of them too become isolated. Well, they think when I speak, people don't hear. When people do speak, I don't hear. So why should I um, continue to be in the company of people? Audiologist Barbara Brago and she says Christians must be concerned about noise pollution in the church. When you go to you visit our modern churches nowadays, the equipment that they use, the speakers that they use, you meet about three to four congregation and. They have, they have, they have set up the, the the volume so high, which is not very healthy for the ear. So we are appealing to the churches; they should minimize the, the the volume of the sound that they produce. Because you may think you are safe at your home, but by the time that you come from your church, you might might have um, temporary hearing loss. And as you move in and out, move in one day, it will become permanent. And where will you be uh, going? So we are appealing to all the churches that they should minimize the noise. Pastor Obed Joy Obin is the founder and leader of the Miracle Manor Church at the Ija. He is aware of the dangers associated with excessive noise in the church. Though 60% of childhood hearing loss is preventable, late diagnosis Lack of equipment and personnel hamper early diagnosis. The hospital don't have such equipment, and there's no personnel. Audiologists take care of such hearing assessment, but we are few. There are few. And the equipment, too, is very, very, very expensive. Government involvement in this area is very, 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 very low. For that matter, the publicity is also is not there. Mr. and Mrs. Dabanka detected their four-year-old daughter, Angela, has a hearing impairment three years after birth. Various hospitals could not detect the condition at early stage. Thanks to the hearing center at Confanochi Teaching Hospital, Angela is receiving some quality attention. But that came with a huge cost to the family's income. My daughter is four years old. She should be talking by now, but she has speech difficulties. Though she sometimes responds to instructions, she can't talk. All that she can say is mama and dada. Treating this condition is expensive. At least we have spent 1,500 Ghana CDs. Though she has insurance, we still pay. Fat in Ghana. Our main problem is late intervention, late identification and late intervention. Before um, a parent identifies that a child, uh, his or her child has a problem, the child might have passed um, midway of the critical period for language learning. But when you go abroad, immediately a child, a, a baby is born, all these gadgets are there. So before the child is discharged, they do all the things. They do OAE, ABR, and any other test. There is, however, hope for people like Angela and many others because hearing aids and speech therapies, among others, are available. There is a hearing aid 
that solves this problem. But the only problem is um, how to get it is a problem because it's very, very expensive. When somebody wants to get it, it's very, very expensive. And apart from the hearing aid too, we can also manage hearing loss by giving them counsel. The Ghana School Feeding Program has assured members of the Ghana uh, Caterers Association payment due them will be made by the end of this month. This was after the caterers massed up at the premises of the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection over arrears of them running into millions of Ghana cities. National coordinator of the program, Patrick Champong, attributed the delay to some administrative processes and the change in government. Maxwell Agbaba is more. Particularly here at the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection, um, some school feeding caterers are gathered here this morning. Pressing home demands for the payment of arrears owed them by the Ministry of Gender and Social Protection. A lot of them have come from different areas here in Accra. And there's even a rep from the Ashanti region, Kumase. We are all here to push that they are paid the monies owed them by the Ministry of Gender and Social Protection. What we are saying is that we've come to realize every government comes and they keep telling us like the old administration today the money is come tomorrow the money is come before they were voted out this government came they've paid 25 days of ds we left it 40 uh, sorry 75 days so what we are saying now is that we are begging the minister but this one uh, was complaining actually she says they've not paid them their monies but um yesterday mother's day um they were able to send them um happy mother's day message and they are not enthused about that you are not happy about a message you received yesterday mm. is that happy mother's day yeah i'm not happy about that mm. you send this message about happy mother's day yeah where is the money we will celebrate that mm. happy mother's day mm. we don't have money to celebrate they didn't pay us for the christmas to mm. celebrate easter to celebrate and mm. even the mother's day then you send this message about greetings mm. that happy mother's day where is that fun we used to do that mm. mother's mm. day so which school they don't give us mm. If suppose they give us, we have cooked, mm. but they tell us, we always tell them next week, we always give them stories mm. so they can't serve us or give us anything again. Mm. So they are not crediting us, they are not doing it anything. So we, are, we, we, we force ourselves even to sell your clothes, mm. to buy, purchase things to cook for the school feeding. Okay. As at now, our, our, our market, our customers say they will not credit us, mm. they will not give us anything because we every day give them stories. Okay. So they stop going. So we don't have the funds to cook. Mm. It's not we are on strike. We are, we are not on strike. There's nothing for us to cook. We don't have the funds. We don't have anything to okay. cook. That's why. Thank you. The national coordinator of the school feeding program, Patrick Echampon, just met the school feeding caterers. He has attributed the delay to some administrative processes. He's promising them that by the end of the month, the payment will be made. In terms of caterer payments, we owe them 100 and 140 days. Of the 140 days, 75 days is what has matured for payments. We have made a lot of efforts to get the monies paid. However, let's not forget that because of the change in government, we all have had to go through some processes because governance and control is key, especially when it comes to the payment of monies. All right, that's it for the um, news for now. We've got lots of news, though, uh, but uh, you can send me a message. Send me a WhatsApp message or an SMS via this number, 50 826 3881. That's 050 And I already have a message from my good friend Bambaki Asamed in Fumbese. He says, The song this morning has touched the deepest part of my heart. I therefore ask you guys to pray for me as I've been praying for you guys. We thank you on behalf of Roland Walker and myself. We thank you. Uh, and yeah, that song is touching. I've got a beautiful one that will come up later on in the show as well. But here's what. You, you can expect on our show, Kwete Nate uh, has an investigative report out. It's actually a, a continuation of a story uh, that he, he, he found not too long ago. Joy News has learned that three senior 
officials of the Public Utilities and Regulatory Commission were detained last week by the Bureau of National Investigation as part of investigations into alleged misappropriation of funds there. We're talking the Executive Secretary and the Director of Public Affairs, Nanaya Jantu. And Kwiti Nati has some more details on the story. We're going to explore it later on this morning when my guests... Abraham Amalaba is a private legal practitioner, and Samir Wuku is a national youth organizer of the New Patriotic Party. Also yesterday, the finance minister, Ken Oforiata, uh, apologized to workers, declared ghosts uh, by his ministry. Well, they say apology accepted. Now, pay our salaries. When will they actually see the physical cash? In the accounts as part of our conversations uh, this morning here on the show. Now, yesterday... Uh, we brought you a, a detailed documentary, part one of it, though, by uh, Joseph Opoku Gapo. That's uh, Poison on the Menu. And earlier in the day, we had a conversation with him here on the AM show. It's very scary, some of the details in this documentary. We all love vegetables. People continue to encourage all of us to eat vegetables. But how can we be sure that we're eating what is right. Uh, so the greater part of his documentary, he went around places in the Ashanti region. So we thought, let Erastas Asaridonko sit down with a few people in Kumasi and let's have their take on this subject. Uh, to think that you, fecal matter is in the vegetable that you're eating, okay, that's not good, is it? Uh, so there's a lot more conversations to have here on the show. Of course, we'll bring you some entertainment as well. In between that, uh, we will do sports. But right after this, I'll bring you the newspaper headlines. We've got the newspaper headlines. And then we'll also touch uh, base with the online portals. We'll start off with myjoyonline.com, definitely. Uh, and there's news in Ivory Coast. Today we'll spend a bit of time to understand the situation in Ivory Coast as well here on the show. So keep sending me uh, your messages. I'd love to hear from you. This one says, uh, I want to wish all Chelsea fans a very good morning, especially those inside Chiana. Really? You're telling me to send that message? Maybe Benedict will carry the rest of it. Stay with me. I'll come back with the newspapers right after this.